Record. Thank you. Get on the ball here. It's recording now. All right. Right on time. See, like I'm trying to use, let me see if I can bump it up like that. Okay, cool. I can. Good. I just want to see everyone's face. All right. Big stretch, everybody. Big stretch. It's going to be a big, long day today. Whew, because we're getting into Angular. Yes, welcome to lecture. We are into our last three chapters, I think, of this unit. Can you believe it? You all right now are sitting in your chairs. You have survived this long. Congratulations. Get everyone a pat on the back. We are into the section called Angular. You have learned so many technologies up until this point. Just last week, you learned TypeScript. Before that, you've learned everything about JavaScript, about the concepts, conditionals, down to variables. Yes, survived, but you are still here. So just take it all in because unit one is the most difficult part of launch code. Once we get in unit two, of course, there will be difficulties, but to get yourself on that bike of coding is the hardest, hardest thing. And you are there. You are starting to ride the bicycle. You might be feeling like you're going to fall over here and there, but you're still on it. So stay cycling, friends. Let's hop into this. Announcements as always. Can anyone guess what the first one is? You guessed it right. Assignment five is due today. Yes, I hope everyone has completed their assignment five. It is not, I would say not the worst one, but it did require us to do a little bit of work. So if you have any questions or you are not yet across the line for assignment five, again, reach out to those TAs, reach out to your TFs, reach out to your fellow colleagues, reach out to me, get that assignment five done because we have one more assignment before the finish line is here Then we move on to unit two. So keep it up. And secondly, we have a studio review tonight. Yes, Kyle's back and Kyle's going to be doing studio review because I just want to sit with you guys and chat because I'm stuck in a hotel room as it's raining outside and I can't even go to the beach. So please, please come and talk to me at studio review. Please. All right. Everybody good? Are we awesome? Like at least one thumb up. Give me like one thumb. Come on, I haven't talked to anyone all day. Like the longest conversation I had was the, with the Panera person to order a sandwich. And I asked her how her day was going and we had like a whole long, like at least three sentence chat. So this is a lot here. All right, good, thank you. At least a thumbs up emoji, I'll take it. All right, everyone, let's hop into it. Start talking to me here. Let's go ahead and I am hungry. All I have right now, actually, no, I did just have a Milky Way, but I'll have a Coca-Cola, but give me the snack. Actually, I hate candy corn here, but I just thought it'd be a funny thing. How many, how would I get candy corn out of this? Who can get me candy corn? I don't want apple, oranges, or bananas. Maybe I'll take pineapple, but I want candy corn right now. How would I do it? Talk to me. Oh, come on. I, I'll take bracket notation. What are we going to be doing with that bracket notation? You're doing Thank a console log on treats with a bracket of one bracket one. You got the first part, and Robert, you are absolutely correct. Bracket, one bracket, but that only gets us to our first array that we want to get stuff out of. Now we have to get out of the second array. Remember, this is called a two-dimensional array right here. To get out of the second dimension, we have to add one more bracket on the end of that. Bracket, one bracket. By doing that, we're going into the second array, which has banana and candy corn. That's what we do with the first bracket. And then we use the second bracket one to get candy corn out of the second slot there. So remember, this is how we, you know, how we get stuff out of two-dimensional arrays. So isn't this fun? Yeah, starting out with a banger here. All right, let's keep it going. Give me candy corn out of this one. Kyle, why are you stumping us on the first two questions? Because I'm a monster. Come on, you got this. What are we going to do here? The treat three dot candy corn? No, wait, I say that right? Remember, what are all of our curly brackets locked in on? What are, our, what are our first brackets? Are they curly brackets, pointy brackets, square brackets? What kind of brackets are they? Square, it's an array. Square brackets, which means it's an array, very good. So to get something out of an array, what do we use? What's inside those brackets? A what number? two. Well, candy corn is locked in treats three, but yes, you're absolutely right. So treats bracket two, I'm sorry. Yeah, I see where you're going with that. Treats bracket two, so we want the third slot. And now we have an object back. What do we use to get things out of objects? 
the key dot, dot value dot notation dot notation very good we can also use bracket notation technically but in this one we're going to use dot notation dot value so this is how we're going to unlock candy corn thank you kyle's finally fed there we go so just remember this stuff it's not going anywhere and you'll see it again in unit two so look at two-dimensional arrays and remember how to get things out of objects Awesome, possum. All right, let's keep moving on. If I wanted to input a CSS file into my HTML, talk me through what kind of tag we're going to use here. Style. You're going to be using a style sheet, but what tag are we going to be using? Script. It's not script. Script is Link. for Java. JavaScript. Input. Link. href. Input Style is for when we sheet. input is for we want to, when we want to create a text box, radio buttons, things like that. But this is going to go in the head. I'll give you a hint. How do we bring this? Line. Is it starts with R? Is starts with an L. L. It starts with an L. Link. Link. Um, link. Link. Very good. Link. Link is the tag name, and then we say rel, which I think you were getting at for an attribute. It's rel style sheet, an href, and then what our style sheet is named. Remember this one, it is a very big one. Awesome, awesome. Uh, to Cody, href is actually how you have it there. Um, that won't be a necessary, necessarily a tag. What you wanna do with href is you do a href and that links to another page. Um, or in this case, is an attribute too, where we wanna to go to with the style sheet. Awesome, awesome. Let's keep going, I'll give you a nicer one here. How about creating a header for the website? What tag are we gonna be using for this? We can actually use a lot of them but one I want in particular to call out. Super hint, it's in the question. Header. header. Very good, header. We're gonna be using header for this one. So in particular, you don't always have to use header to create a header, but it's a good way to start. What if I wanted to create a text box? I already heard someone getting ahead of the game with this one. What? You need to unmute yourself, Jade, because you are absolutely correct. Yes, it is input. <laughs> Sorry, input. <laughs> input with our type. Remember our attribute type dictates what our input's gonna transform into. So for text, it transforms into a text box. But how about this? If we wanted to create a radio button, what would happen? But input type radio. But Very good. Radio. Our type would be radio, but remember with radio buttons, we need a few more attributes. Specifically, we need the name and the value attribute as well. So remember, if you're using your radio buttons, which of course I don't expect you just to call out, when you're using your radio buttons, remember you have the name for your group name, as in all the radio buttons of your group, with the value being unique to each option. So option one, option two, option three, et cetera. So finally, down to the last one. You thought I didn't have enough space for another question. I sure did. What would we wrap all these input tags in? All these input oh, tags label. in. Labels is how we could label. I'll take that, but we're looking for one more thing. What would you want to wrap all of your input tags in? A form tag. I uh, love that. Yes, absolutely. Uh oh, oh gosh, what did I just do? There we go. I'm clicking buttons. Form. Yes, we need to wrap it in the form tags. Remember, this is how we submit something to our APIs, to our servers across the world. We need to submit this using those methods, gets or posts. So yes, there we go. Awesome, you guys are doing great here. Let's move on. Remember, every variable has a type. Can you tell me what that technology we use on top of JavaScript, we sugarcoat JavaScript with, to enforce typing of our variables? TypeScript. Very good, TypeScript, we just learned about that. So TypeScript, remember, is the person that's enforcing, or the thing, not really a person, is enforcing those types on your variables. So that being said, if I wanted to create a variable called snack, with the value of M and M's, how would I make that in TypeScript? Let's start uh, with the variable name first. Um, let snack. Very good. Uh, colon string. Colon, colon string. Very good. Equals. Equals. Snack. M and M's. And M and M's. Awesome job, everyone. That is exactly right. Remember our colon and then the data type that our thing is going to be. So awesome job. Just remember everyone out there that you guys are freaking awesome and freaking cool. So yes, you just got all those things. Remember, you've learned so many technologies. That's just the tip of the iceberg of what you actually know. Remember that.
Oh, got to click that button. There we go. So, also this looks like a coder I work with. I thought that was hilarious. But anyway, I want like the vine stuff on the background. That'd be look really cool in the office or just my home office. Whew, okay, take a deep breath. We're good. We're good. We're doing things. We're doing stuff. Is it sunny in St. Louis right now? I might just come back. Maybe. Let's look at the weather. Anywho, let's keep going here. Let's talk about a common scenario. So we're going to start diving into more about what's going to be in the life of a developer here today. Sunny and 80. Thank you, Trey. Rubbed in the face there. It is not either of those things here. All right, let's talk about a common scenario. So as a developer, you're going to be in charge of creating things. In this particular, with HTML and JavaScript, you're going to be creating UIs, user interfaces, things that people interact with. So in this case, let's pretend this is a website. We're going to have a little thing up here that says adopt a dog. And then we're going to create a form below that says, welcome to my form. We're going to adopt the dog. So we need a first name, last name, email, phone number. And then we're going to have a nice little submit button. Real quick, what I want to call out, because I know I've been using these terms without actually explaining what I'm talking about. If anyone has a question, when I refer to the header, I mean the thing at the very top. If you go to any common web page, you always see a header at the top that has all of your options. Maybe you get to go around the page, whatever. That's just called the header. Then also a very, another very important part is called the footer, very bottom. Down there you'll see maybe uh, a couple other links, maybe a copyright, like copyright Google Incorporated or copyright launch code, whatever. So that's usually what the footer has. So if I were to refer to that, header, footer. I mean, of course, head, foot. It makes sense, but just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Let's talk about what's in the middle, though. We see this. This is the fun stuff. This is the form. Let's go ahead and bring it in here and see what we typically do with this form. Up until now, we would transform what we see here. If I was given this, like said, hey, all of you, go out and make this form, you'd be like, okay, I'll do that because I'm awesome. And this is what we would probably come up with around this. Of course, we'd have some other things in there, maybe some labels, maybe some divs, whatever. But this is the code that we would come up with. So this is fine. This is great, you did exactly what I asked. So as your designer, I'm always constantly changing my mind. So what if I said, I like how you did this text box, but, and this is also on a Friday afternoon here, I'm not really feeling the first name in the box, I'm feeling more of it outside of the box. Can you just like put it up there? And me as a developer just has a blank stare with a fake grin saying, well, that's a cute little visual change you just did, but it's a huge coding task. And they're like, but it's, it's just a little thing, right? And you don't have any plans on Friday. I'm like, no, why would I ever have plans on Friday? No. So looking at the code here, it's like, okay, I have to change these four things. These now have to change. Like, okay, that's not the biggest ask in the world to you, to us right now. But has anyone ever done their taxes? Raise their hand if you ever have to go through that pain once a year. Have you ever used TurboTax or any online software like your tax? Could you count how many text boxes are in that application? No, because our brains would go to mush because there are hundreds of different text boxes in TurboTax that we have to put pointless information, but hopefully get a good tax return at the end. So if you were a developer for TurboTax and they asked you to do that change, you're not looking at four inputs here, you're looking at a few thousand. Now, does that sound like something you want to deal with? No. Coders don't want to deal with that. Why? Because we're the laziest people in the world. I don't like to do more work than I absolutely have to. Hence, we create technologies to do things for us. Therefore, we need a technology that helps us compartmentalize our things. And Code, you are absolutely correct. Lazy equals efficient. Absolutely. I get from point A to point B as fast as I can, so I can just keep being lazy at point B. So yes, we need a technology to compartmentalize our things. Looking at our form again, we need something that when we change one of them, we need something that can be able to change all of them. So what can we exactly do here? Well, the answer is, is that we've created technology that allows us to do that. The answer to this is called Angular. Angular is a framework that we use that uses, utilizes HTML, TypeScript, and JavaScript to help compartmentalize our code into different blocks, if you will, or containers or components. That's what we're gonna be learning today is how can we take this problem that we just stated and make it easier so you can go have a fun time on Friday instead of staying until Sunday crying your eyes out because you have to change a thousand lines of code for no reason. 
because your visual designer, maybe named Lacey, always comes over to your desk on Friday, which changes. Not it's like it's a personal problem, Lacey. All right, only happens once or twice, but yes, designers do get in your hair. <sighs> Just let me be me. All right, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about this. So what I want you to take a look at is this code. Today, we're going to be taking this code that we're talking about, but I don't want you to think of it too much as code. Instead, we're gonna be thinking of it as a puzzle or like Legos. We're going to learn, <laughs> Andrew, that's not good. I hope you feel good or I hope, you, hope you're not uh, hurt. We're gonna be looking at these components. So we have our headers, our forms, our inputs. Again, looking at that code, we have our headers, we'll have our forms, we have our inputs, but don't look at it again as code, look at it as those building blocks. So instead of just having lines of code and we're typing it out here, we're gonna start being able to put our pages together using these different components and also using them with reusability in mind. Instead of coding a thousand lines for input, maybe you only have to copy and paste it one or two times and change everything. That's what we're gonna be learning today. Before I begin, I do want to truly uh, bold this statement is that I'm gonna be using Angular today. If you do not have it on your machine already or haven't gone through the reading, you'll need to go to 28.3.1, I believe. So feel free to do that, but I'll be answering any questions that come in and saying that Angular is not on, on your machine with that answer. If you don't know if Angular is on your machine, type in N as in Nancy, G as in Greg, space dash V. If something pops up saying that NG is not recognized, you don't have Angular on your machine. All right, let's hop into this. Today we're gonna to be creating an Angular, whew, excuse me, let's take a breath here. Let's take a breath, there we go. Today we're gonna to be creating an Angular application that kind of looks just how we saw that form on the PowerPoint. First things first, I opened a terminal on the very bottom of my Visual Studio code here. Melanie, it's N as in Nancy, G space dash V. N G dash V. It's going to come up with a bunch of stuff. It's going to be mad at me because that dash V isn't anything, but that will help you out. All right, let me go and clear that. So we're going to need to start creating an Angular project. What I really want to reiterate is that Angular is not a new language. It is a framework. Remember TypeScript. TypeScript is not a new language. It's sugar-coated JavaScript. TypeScript is like a police officer in JavaScript. It's enforcing you having all of those data types. So TypeScript equals police officer. Angular is a framework. It's providing structure, how we can structure our JavaScript to be more reusable with these other, these things called components. It is not a new language. Instead, it's like an architect for JavaScript. Angular is like an architect, while TypeScript is a police officer. However, both still use the power of JavaScript and HTML in order to run. So I do really want to reiterate that. So what we're going to do is that we installed Angular on our machine prior. Now we need to actually create an Angular project so we can begin learning it. So what I want you to do is that go to whatever directory that you want to install all or to so put all your Angular projects in. As always, I do mine on my desktop and then CD into LC for launch code. In here, I created actually an Angular folder just to have all my projects in there. So I'm going to call it our CD Angular. And now I'm in my Angular folder. To start creating a project, I'm just making sure I get all my stuff correct. There we go. I'm going to type in N as in Nancy, G as in Greg, space, new. And then the name of my project. Well, I'm going to call Angular part one dash lecture, T-U-R-E. And then I'm gonna press enter. So I named it <laughs> Angular part one lecture. Instead of spaces, I use dashes. It's gonna ask me, do I wanna add Angular routing? Just press no for right now, you don't want that. And then CSS, so just press enter. Uh, can I make it too long? Maybe I did. Well, you're just being weird. Angular part one then. Oh, shh, make these. Oh, you were just the worst. Really? You're going to do this to me right now? All right, fine. You can just go away then. 
CD. Really? Interesting. Okay. CD. Else, uh, I'll see. CD Angular. All right. NG new. Let's call it Angular part one. There we go. We'll just spell everything out. And I even install Angular right. Awesome. <laughs> no. CSS. Let's get this going. There we go. Now it's starting to create stuff. Um, Jen, that would be interesting. I don't exactly know. Um, there might not be anything wrong with it. I would hope that everything that you see on your screen is going to be like mine. Give me a bunch of deprecation messages. Yeah, I'll get a bunch of deprecation messages here. We see that in that yellow there right now, now on my screen. Um, yeah, I know. It takes forever. I know it takes a long time too on Windows machines. While all this is happening, I will give you the disclaimer that I need to give you. So to let you all know, and I will be transparent with this one and also the next unit, Angular is not my primary framework. My primary framework is actually React. So Angular is not a new language to me, but I am relatively, I'd say not immature, but still learning through the process. So if you do ask me any in-depth questions about Angular, I might have to Google it and search it with you rather than giving you a straightforward answer. So if I am stumped by any questions, I apologize, but I'm always trying to be transparent that I don't know everything. I don't know every framework. I don't know every technology, but I will find your answer if you have one. Uh, to Ryan, yes. Uh, oh yeah, so no, sorry, to Andrew. Yep, press node routing and then press enter because you want CSS. The other options they give you are different kinds of ways of styling stuff, but right now we're just gonna care about CSS. All right, there we go. We have our Angular project created. Press LS and we see that my Angular, <laughs> spelt wrong, is right there. Awesome, awesome. So let's say Angular, you, <laughs> Angular part one, CD into that. And let's go ahead and take a look at it. What I'm gonna do after I do that is I'm gonna come up here and click open. That thing's gonna drop down because I got that Mac stuff. There we go, desktop, go into LC, go into Angular. Go into Angular part one, press open. And look at this, it made a bunch of stuff for us. Isn't this nice? Let it load, here we go. All right, let's take a pause and we'll look at all of these files here. So we have our E2E, which don't even worry about that. Um, our source is what we're gonna care about the most, SRC. And then we have angular.json, which are all of our settings for Angular, which we're not gonna care about. Package JSON. You've seen this before. This is from our NPM, our Node Package Ma uh, Manager. It's going to have all of the things that we need in it to run Angular and also our site. And then we have TS Config, TS JSON. Um, that's for TypeScript. So if you're ever wondering that stuff, don't worry about any of it. It's just there to help you. Don't edit any of the things unless explicitly told to, unless or unless you absolutely know what you're doing. Under source is where it's more free to definitely start editing things. So in source, we're gonna care about this folder called app. So source and then app, SRC and then app. Here we see our app.component.css. What's CSS, who can tell me? Stylings, exactly. Stylings and then we have our HTML, which who can tell me what HTML is? All the visual stuff, right? And then we have our spec down here, spec, who knows what spec is? You all remember it from assignment three. I know that one. Yeah, those are tests. I'm not gonna worry about that. Don't worry. I hate tests. And then we're gonna finally get down to this very important one. Look at this very, very closely. App.component.ts. This is where the money is. This is where everything stems from. If you are that person that needs to know where everything is put together before things are done or whatever, like whatever the machine's doing. This is your answer. This is where your components or your HTML, your stylings, um, the selector, which we'll talk in a bit, everything here, everything is here in the TS file. It is one of the most, if not the most important file for your component. So that's what I really wanted to make very explicit here. Component.ts, the TS file. So I told you TypeScript's not going anywhere anytime soon. Make sure I'm staying on my stuff yes there we go all right so we have successfully created an angular application now let's go ahead and we're going to run this how we do a run is get my mouse back what we're going to do is go to terminal 
then new terminal once again. So something pops up on the bottom there. And I see that I'm in Angular, again, it's misspelled, part one. This is where I need to run from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in ooh, uh, ng and then serve. What serve means is that serve up, get started. It's going to actually run our application here. So let's go and press enter and we'll explain what's going on here. Mark, to your question, if NPM is not recognized, you'll need to go back to the previous chapters and see what Node is and download Node onto your machine. And also, don't pay attention to my yellow text. Yes, all of my stuff is outdated. I have very conservative views when it comes to updating stuff. I was talking to my uh, <laughs> team today. I'm going to make side chat with you guys. Oh, we're talking to my team today because I'm supposed to update my like OS on my computer and everything. I'm like, never. Because I hate updates. That always breaks things and then I have to fix them. Like I said, I'm lazy. All right, there we go. I think we are all started here. And I know we're started here because, because I can't see anything. There we go. Because we are, it says live development server is listening on localhost colon four two zero zero. Now, if you're wondering what localhost 4200 means, that is meaning your computer at port 4200. So let's going to go ahead and we're going to go over to here. And what we're going to do is control V and I forgot to shut down my server here. So that's fun. So we're going to go to localhost colon 4200. Again, this is for your IP. This means your computer, your local IP address. And then this after the colon, what this is called is called a port number a port number. If you were ever wondering what every single website that comes in its port number is, it's always 80. So if you ever see 80, that means you're on the web or somebody's trying to go through one of the most used ports on your system. For uh, 4200 though is not widely used, hence why Angular uses it. So look at this. We got our Angular stuff to show up. Awesome job. Self high five. Isn't that great? So let's keep going. We have our website uh, up and showing, but actually, you know what? I will pause for a second. I've been talking too much. Does anyone have any questions about how we gotten up to this point? Um, is this going to be like a repeatable routine that you're going to use? Or is this just a one-off instance that we're doing right now? Um, to create an Angular application? Uh, I guess so, sure. So right now we've just created the Angular application. If you ever want to create one on your own, the process I just did is absolutely crucial. This is the only way you can create an Angular application. When it comes to launch code though, typically they'll give you one of those GitHub links. So you won't always have to run ng new and then your, uh, then your own application. They'll give you one to work on. So it depends on the scenario, but if you ever want to make one on your own time, what we just did is absolutely what you have to do. I um I did it. I if I do it with my um with my with the ver the regular Visual Studio since I have regular from how I do my dad gave it to me because of how he gets it with his company. Um you can make it with a template without having to do that for the actual, um, for Angular. Okay. Well, awesome. Yeah. In uh, another level of Visual Studio Code, yeah, they could definitely possibly offer that. Yeah. I'm not familiar too much with that, but yeah, that was great. Um, well, I learned Angular instead of you or React. Angular is that is a deep question mark. Give me one second and let me make sure. So when I open my local host, it sends me to the resource page. What should I do from there? If you're talking about the resource page that we're looking at on my screen, then you are in the right place. Um, I forked it from GitHub. This happens when I run ng serve. I can't see that picture. Let's see if I can zoom in. The serve command requires to be run an Angular project, but the project definition could not be found. That's because you are not in your project. So wherever you've cloned it, make sure that you see the end of the proper directory where the Angular project is living. It looks like right now you're actually on your home directory, not where the project is. So make sure you see the into that. Mark, why learn Angular in, uh, instead of Viewer React is, 
is the nature of the framework better learning purposes or is there something in Atlantico who is an angular tan so uh, essentially all of these frameworks that you just named have very uh, have different similarities. So it doesn't really matter which one you learn. It's like the same what language you learn. It's all about the environment you want to work in. In the company that I work for, for it's typically React. We, uh, we don't have much Angular just because someone liked React more. That doesn't mean that company B, there are people there that use Angular. It's all about the environment. But the best thing about this is that once you know Angular and you understand its concepts, Vue and React will come more naturally. So it's best to find one, focus on that, learn it, and then use that wisdom and knowledge to learn the other two frameworks. When it comes to just which one to pick, we picked it for you, just so you don't have to have the challenge, and it's today is Angular. Um, I cannot help you with that one. I'd have to look more into it. I apologize. Um, if any TFs are on, if you could look at uh, Vinny's message. I have a Mac and said sudo before install. Is that okay? I mean, it worked. Yes. Uh, if you need to run sudo, that's just depending on your security settings. So yeah, feel free to run sudo um, on that on that command if you have to. All right. Ooh, not what I wanted. Go back. Where'd you go? That's weird. Oh, I was like, that's why. Okay. Let's get into this, everybody. So we're going to continue on here just so we have enough time to get through everything. Yeah. So we are now in our Angular spot. This is exactly what we want. So what I'm going to do is that we're going to talk about what exactly is showing up here on this screen. We see, welcome to Angular part one. But let's go ahead and go and look our in our HTML. We're going to go to our app.component.html. This is where all of our stuff is coming from. Take a very close look at this page. Welcome to Angular part one. Here are some links for you to start. Here are some links for you to start right there. And then it says up here, welcome to, and then, well, okay, mind blown. What is this thing exactly? It doesn't say what we just said. It has these two curly brackets on the left and on the right. What exactly is this? Well, like I said, this is a framework. Angular is a framework. It, allows structure to your JavaScript, AKA it's a template. Angular is here to offer you templates of how to structure your information. So we can offer dynamic content to these templates to basically render however we want. In this case, we're rendering whatever I pass in as the title. Hence, I can make this page again dynamic. It can change with different data coming in. The data being the title here. But the question you should be asking yourself is, okay, title's coming in, but where is it coming in from? That's what we're gonna explore right now. Title, what you see here in those two curly brackets, is coming in from, again, that master file here, the .ts file. Title is coming in right here. This is how we get Angular part one. Again, apologies for the Angular misspelling. Angular part one. Welcome to Angular part one. That's how it happens. Let's go ahead and change this and make sure that Kyle's not just blowing smoke. Welcome to Kyle's project. Now watch this very closely. I'm gonna save this. And by the time we get back to here, what's gonna happen is that it's gonna automatically updating, automatically update. This is going to be called a hot reload, meaning that it's gonna do it for you automatically now. Look at that, we're growing up in the world. Angular is gonna start refreshing its screen for us. Isn't that nice? So not only that, we see that it's updating the Kyle's project. So what this means is that this title here is being brought in to our HTML. So now we can pass in information into this template, this HTML file. This gives us, I know it's a very, very small example, but it gives us a lot of flexibility. We can now create dynamic content using Angular. That's a game changer, especially back in the 19 whatevers. This was awesome when they first basically come out with this technology. Not saying the Angular came out in the 1990s. It came out like in the 2000s sometimes. But anyway, is there export import? Uh, we met, there will be, but we're not gonna get in anything like that today. That will be in the upcoming classes. Today, we're just gonna stick with HTML mostly. One thing I wanna more show you with is that this app.components, or let's see, do the individual components auto refresh or does the whole page, the entire page? So if you update any small component within Angular, the entire page will refresh and reflect that if need be. How is it getting the title then? 
the title is being, let's, let's back up. How is anything, how are any of these folders or files getting that information? How is HTML getting that file or that information? It's because of this folder right here. We're building a component. What exactly is a component? If we go back to this, and we remember we have to think about this more being Legos now or a puzzle. One of these individual parts is a component. That's what we're building here. So this is a component. That's what we're building here. So a component needs a template URL, which is an HTML page, and of course it's stylings. When the component is built, this is the answer to your question. When the component is built, all the information from right here gets jammed in to that HTML site, AKA here. So when the component gets built, title gets jammed in here and it updates right there. So if you're asking where that information comes from, it comes from right here. And we'll see a little bit more of an example here when I say, let's see, what can I put here? Um, my name, and wow, I cannot spell it at all, Kyle. All right, let's go ahead and see this. I just created now another thing, another variable here within this component. Let's go ahead and see how we can use that. So here's some links, and I'm gonna put in now my name somewhere in here. I'm gonna say here are some links from two curly brackets to start out this, and then say my name, the name of the variable. And then for just grammar purposes, I'm gonna put a comma there. Save that, and let's watch the magic happen. I already refreshed. Look at that. I don't know if that's a yawn or like you're a wow. Oh my gosh, isn't that crazy? Yes, I know. We just passed information into our Angular site. Is everyone's mind blown. Who does your mind blown, right? Exactly, yes. It is crazy out there, everyone. Okay, technology changes lives. I just put my name inside of a site. Gosh, the miracle of technology. All right, so that is how we can pass information over to a template, no comma needed. Oh, oh gosh, oh, okay. You're, you're gonna attack me on my grammar. It's gonna be a long old battle there. Um, I'm terrible at grammar. <laughs> if you're wondering if those spaces have to be included also, they do not. Those were just there for a little bit of, uh, for clarification, just to show you that. So just letting you guys know that. So there we go. That is the beauty of Angular and a very, very tip of the iceberg kind of look. So I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you guys and just quick questions here before we start diving into a little bit more complicated example. Is it common to keep all the components in one file or would you be making separate uh, TS files for components as you get go on? I love that question. I wish we asked the, just like one more question over because it would have been a great transition question. That'll be our next topic, oh. so hold tight. But to answer your question, multiple files. Anything else? All right, sounds like we need to get going then. All right, I, Kyle, you're, Kyle, this is way too easy. I mean, come on. I know, I'm sorry, just make sure. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about a more complicated example here. I'm gonna grab some HTML that I made previously. Yes, I cheated and I worked ahead, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All right, so here we go. We're gonna bring it over here and we're gonna put it into this. Goodbye, all this stuff, and hello, new HTML. Ooh, nice and shiny. All right. I don't even know what that did is. There it is. Oh. All right, save that. Let's go and see what this looks like. Bam! Now we got ourselves a form. If you're wondering where this HTML came from, I just copied and pasted it from my notes. If you really want to get it, yes, of course, I'll give it to you. All right, you guys are so needy. I'm going to put it right there in the questions channel. If you just want to follow along, there's the HTML that I use. I just copied and pasted that into our app.component.html. Now, what we're going to explore here is that, okay, as a developer, I see a couple different areas of my site. First things first, I see my adopt a pet here in the Humane Society. That's up in a header. Okay, that's one area of my site. I also see 
a form down here. There's another form. That's going to be another area of my site. So I'm seeing this guy up here, this header as one area. And then the form down here is another big area of my site. Of course, we have this little title here. That's not too much of it. It doesn't have much weight in my mind. So I'm not really look, I'm looking at another area, but not as big. I want to focus on that header. And I want to focus on the form. Now, these areas can also be translated into another word called components. They're a big component of my site. And this is what Angular is all about. We want to compartmentalize this header and this form into its own different components. So let's go ahead and do that now. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to take this header. We're going to do something simple. Let's take the low-hanging fruit. We're going to make this header into these component things that we haven't even seen yet. Not really actually seen. Technically, this is a component, but we're going to get a little bit more in depth. Let's create a component ourselves. Again, a component is there just to compartmentalize code. Nothing else than that. Just think of it as a container, and we can use that in our HTML reusable, like reusably. Reusably? I think it's a word. All right. How are we going to do that? We're going to create a component here. We say ng, and then we say generate, and then we say component, and then the name of the component. I'm going to say header component here, and then press enter. What this is going to do is it's going to create a component for us so we don't have to do any of this hard work. It's pretty nice. Once that's done, take a look at what happened here. A new folder was created inside of the app folder called header component. Inside of this folder is a lot of other files. Those files are the exact same ones that you've already seen, a CSS file, an HTML file, a stack file, and a TS file. Which one, again, is the heavy hitter? Which file has all the meat in it? If you said TS file to yourself, that is absolutely correct. It is the TS file that has all of our stuff in it. This is where all of our files are chosen that we want to compile into this component. Now, the thing that we're going to talk about first, though, is the HTML. We need to actually build this HTML here. So this is all of the this is the area we're going to put all of our header HTML in. So where's that header HTML at right now? Well, again, we pasted it over here in app.component.html. I'm going to scroll up to the header itself. I'm going to just take all of this and cut it by doing command X. So I just cut all of that out. I'm going to come over here to header.component or the header component, the component.html, and I'm going to paste it in. There we go. I cut all of that out of the previous HTML and I pasted it in here. Let's go ahead and save this and let's see what happens on our HTML. Anybody want to take bets? What's going to happen here? It's going to. Not do anything because I didn't save, did I? Huh. Kyle, what are you doing? Save that. And let's try this again. What's it gonna do? Nothing again, Kyle, because you didn't reserve your stuff. You guys are all probably just be like, Kyle, come on, you should press ng serve. Remember, I stopped the serve or I stopped the server, so nothing's gonna show up. I have to restart it. So ng serve. So I'm gonna restart the server. It's gonna go back up here. It's gonna take a second. Computer's gotta get all its stuff together. Gotta get it's all little cute little component. Keep it looking computer files or whatever together. I don't know. Oh, come on. Wow. Need to be faster. There we go. Compiled successfully. And it's listening on 421, 4200. All right, there we go. What happens? That header completely goes away, it disappeared. Why? because we created another component, that was A-OK. -okay. Nothing went wrong here, nothing blew up. But we're not using the component anywhere. We created it, but we're not using it. So yes, we have to use it now. Yes, I know, craziness. How do we use a component though? That is the question. Well, we need to do something up here. We need to call to that component. How do we insert anything into HTML? Anything at all. What is always, always there to insert stuff in there? The answer is a tag. We need to create a tag to say, I want this component. To do that, I need to get the what the component's tag name is. So what I do is I go up to component.ts here for header component, and it's called the selector. The selector is the tag name that you just created for your component. Look at you, you just named a component. So we're gonna go back down to app.component.html, create my tag with my pointy bracket, close that, and there we go. That's it. You just put that tag in there saying, I want this component. Let's control save and see what happens. 
we refresh and now we see that component is back because you just call to the component say hey insert this html here and put it on my page you just use a component within your other app component and it built the site remember we use components to bring html into our site in multiple different places and what happens at compilation time when the site is being built is that it says okay this person wanted this component here. I'm gonna go into that component, grab all the HTML, and I'll put it in here as I'm compiling. That's what we just did. So here we go. This is the basics of at using a component inside of our HTML. So I'm getting a few questions here. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna unmute. Feel free to yell at me. So when your components breaks, will the others load? Depends, it really does, does depend. Sometimes the entire thing will break. Um, it depends on how bad the, the break actually is. Um, I'm gonna say typically not, you'll typically get a big compilation error, say one of your components is out of whack. Um, but if it's something minuscule, the HTML will still load. What I'm, so what I'm saying is, is that if it's a Angular error, everything will break. So if your Angular syntax is off, everything will break. If your HTML syntax is off, things will still build. So that's why I said it depends. If you have an Angular error, everything will break. If you have an HTML error, it usually will still load. Kyle, uh, quick question for you. So yeah, what's up? For that, for that app tag that you did on line one, if you separated uh, that tag, you know, uh, for the opening and closing, like, for example, if you put uh, the opening tag uh, above the header and then the uh, closing tag uh, of that app tag uh, just below the footer, I mean, would that make a difference? Do they have to be together like that, or can they? I have zero idea what. I have zero idea what that's going to do. Let's see. Looks like the world exploded. I'd say don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it looks like don't put those children or don't put those tags around there. Keep them together. Let's see if I won't. Let's see if I'll be yelled at if I do that. Let me just do that, and it'll be easy too. I don't know. You don't want to do that? Fine. Try that then. There we go. Yeah, it's like keep it together. Does not look like it's going to be fun if you do that. I'll give you Did a you... further explanation. Yeah, absolutely. If you want a further explanation of why that's actually disappearing, I'll let you know. Um, direct message me if you're really curious. But yeah, don't do that because you're putting it inside the children and we're not doing anything with that. So, yep. Um, good question. Any other questions before we move on here? All right, let's keep going. All right, so we learned how to do a header component. So now the other component I wanted to build was the form. Let's go ahead and take a look at that one then. Stating that I didn't unmute you all, how do I go ahead and generate a new component? What command should I use? NG. NG, great start. All right, what's next? Component. Generate. We're missing one word. Generate. Generate first, then component, and then the name of our component. Awesome, awesome. Generate component, and then that's going to, we're just going to call it um, my form. Why not? Do that, press enter, and that's going to generate another folder with a bunch of stuff in it. Cool, cool. So like we did before, an awesome job, Ryan. Yep, absolutely correct. So there we go, we generated everything. We come up to my form. We see we have all those same exact things there. Perfect, perfect. So now what I wanna do is that I wanna go get the form. So I go down, down to component.html. I'm already here, what am I talking about? And I'm gonna go ahead and grab this entire div here. There we go, I'm gonna cut that. There we go. And then I'm gonna go up to my form.html. There we go. I'm going to save that. I'm going to save this. Awesome. So we have now created my form component and we took it out of my app component here. So now what I want to do is that I need to again go over here. Oops, excuse me. Go over to my app component. I need to use it. I got to check what the name is though because it named it myself. Or there you go. App dot app dash my form right there. So now I go back to app dot component dot html and I put it inside of those brackets. Well, first, before I do that, let's go ahead and make sure that it's actually disappeared so we can actually see it before and after. 
Oh yeah. Excuse my stupidity. Do, do, do. And she serves. There we go. <laughs> I hope that's a good thing where you're going from a bike with square wheels to a real bike. Because yes, we are hopping on a motorcycle right now. It is, it is definitely a beast of a technology, but it is awesome. And it has propelled the web quite a ways. All right, so there we go. We're gonna go back here, refresh, and now we see our form is gone. Awesome, awesome. All right, let's go ahead and add this back now. I call to the component by using the selector's name again. There we go, I control save, come over here, and look at that, it's back. Awesome. All right, so now we're using components. Look how much cleaner now our site is compared to what it was before. We had a lot of HTML in there. It was hard to keep things straight. It was just like, what's going on? Where's my header start and end? And where's my form start and end? I don't know. But with components, we can keep things not only reusable, but also a lot cleaner. Hence another reason why the developers love going to Angular, Vue, or React. So yeah, this is another perk of it. Let's talk about one more thing. We said in our diagram that things are reusable, but we haven't really seen any reusability. The thing we used the most was inputs that's locked inside of our form. So right now we're gonna learn next of how can we use a component within a component and also reuse them as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. We're gonna see how we can take these inputs in our form right here, these inputs here, and I don't want it to be locked away in this HTML anymore. I want them to be their own entity. I want them to be their own component. So that's what we're gonna do now. This component is only gonna be used in the form component though. So I want it to be form component specific. Yes, form component specific. So I only want it to be used in the form component. So what I need to do is I need to create this component within the form component. Now, what do I mean by that? I want it to be within the my form folder. That's where I want to create my component. So that's what we're gonna do now. So you say control C, and now what I need to do is I need to actually CD change directory into my form directory. So I see LS, I'm gonna CD into my SRC here, source. Else again, I need to know that I need to go into my app. I need to go into app here. So I need to go to my form. So I CD into app. Now I need to CD into my dash form. There we go. Now I'm into the my form directory within my project. Again, I want to create my text box here to only be in my form so the component can use this component. So the form component can use the input component. So what I do is now I create or generate the component here. So I say ng generate component. And I say my form text box. Just like that. What that's gonna do is it's gonna generate the component within the directory my-form. So we'll see that now. My-form-textbox. So there we go. And it comes with all of its own files here. Awesome. It's exactly what we wanna see. So now what I can do is just how I did before, I'm going to take the HTML out of this form here and put it in there. But instead of taking every single one of these inputs, all I need to do is take one of them. So I'm just gonna cut one of those out. I'll keep it there just so I know it was there. But I cut the code. I come over to form, uh, my form text box, take out this paragraph that comes with all of them. I'm gonna paste in my code here. There we go. I just pasted in my code for my HTML. And I just created my component. Now, the best thing about this is that the reusability of this component, I can go back and remove all those prior inputs. So let's go ahead and hop back over there. Look how many inputs we have. We have four of them, all with the same exact code. I don't want to use that anymore. So I'm going to go to my TS and I'm going to grab my selector once again, because this is how we utilize that component. And come back down to my form dash component or dot component dot HTML, and I'm going to replace it with this. Look at that. Now I'm gonna copy this and watch the magic of that yeah, Angular, I said TypeScript. Just replace all of these things there. 
there we go. We save that. I'm going to say, and I didn't forget this time, ng sir. There we go. And while that's starting, do you have a delete? Do you have to delete the entire component if you create it in the wrong directory, or can you drag and drop a file from the directory? In that case, I would say delete it because some configurations happen behind the scenes for you um, if, if, depending on what directory you're in. So I'd say delete it and then recreate it in the correct directory. Great question. All right, looks like our server's back up and going. All right, now we're gonna go back over to reform and we're gonna see something a little different this time. All of our text boxes are now there reusing that component, but we have all of them under email. They're not unique at all, but we are reusing each component and each of them have a text box. That's great, everything's working properly, except the reusability aspect is not there. So, we did get to see the reusability of um, Angular and everything. So that was a great example, but customization we haven't still explored yet. Hence, I will leave you all here because that is what we'll be talking about in the next class of how we can actually make these things a little bit more unique to the situation. So that's it, cliffhanger. <laughs> First class of the cliffhanger, I'm sorry. I hate cliffhangers especially when I was walking, watching Walking Dead, always happened. What I'm gonna do is let you all unmute and feel free to ask me any questions up until this point. Happy to answer them. Um, Can you go back Kyle? to your code? Oh, sorry. No, you're fine, please. All right, there you go. You have two div class equals containers. Do you need both of those? That was for some styling that I was doing. Technically, no, and it will be the same. I, I don't have any of the stylings in there. If you guys want to see the actual stylings of what I was, why I was doing that, um, I don't even know what that was for. Oh, there it is. Okay. What I was doing is that I can show you this example now, too, since we have a little bit of time. But um, since I have container in here and inline, what I was doing is I was coming to, what is this, the form component, going to my styling here. And I was doing that. So it was just to add a little bit of styling there. So if you come back here, there we go. Now it's like kind of a little bit more inline. So that's why I did that. Um, to answer your question, no, you don't have to do that if you're just trying to put the text boxes in there. It has nothing to do with Angular. It was just to make the styling a little bit more pretty for this example. Uh, Kyle, so I understand yeah. that you you mostly use React your knowledge of angular isn't like that fully developed but um i noticed that we're using angular 8 point something i think in the book i could be wrong um what can i expect in the differences between angular 8 and 12 that i wouldn't want to use the most recent version of angular and i understand if you can answer that question so i can't answer it specifically i can't tell you what exactly changes between 8 and 12 because i barely know what's even in 8 so but I will tell you the differences between any kind of dramatic change like that typically has to do with um, with styling changes, as in like coding structure or syntax changes that can typically be a danger. Um, also, a deprecation of 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 useful tools that are in eight, mainly because they've gone to newer, better things or more optimized. So, by moving to a higher level language, your which is four, four versions behind, which we are using eight, things could not work. Things might be a little bit different or act a little bit more strangely just because the behavior might have changed from, from so many versions moving forward. That, that would be the case for any language that has moved up for four versions by now. So there are dangers out there. That's why I would recommend keeping to our current, current level, just because if something goes wrong, we have to always take in, okay, maybe it's something between 12 and eight that are different. That's why I would recommend sticking with eight. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Regan, I'm sorry. Cliff, no, you're not. It's okay. I'm not. No, because I got to keep you guys coming back for the next class. They're like, I know you're all in the edge. He's like, how is he going to do it? How is he going to customize that in particular component? Like, I know, I know. Just give it, give it till Monday. Have a good weekend. Think about it all, all Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Oh, all right, what other questions you guys got? Anything else about any of this? I'm moving the wrong one. There we go. Any of it at all? Here, I'll put my, well, you're thinking of questions. I'll put my header style in there so you can see my pretty pictures that I made today. 
Told you I was bored. Very, very bored. Where's my stuff at? What you oh, doing so in you Florida? I am here for another family vacation on the other side. So, which is my family clearly likes Florida. <laughs> Mainly because it's close. But um, let's see. So, yes, I am here for another family vacation. But then, if anybody wants to start guessing, guess where Kyle's going to be popping his head into class next week? And no one can name the city I'm going to be in. I've never even been there. Havana, Cuba. How did you first guess? Good job. No, I'm just kidding. That would be awesome. Though. <laughs> uh, Rock Morgan, Texas. Albuquerque. Oh, not that. No, not that bad. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be green. I'll give you a hint. It's going to be green. Greenville, <laughs> South Carolina? No, but that'd be cool. I, could have I have the best sushi of my life in South Carolina. No joke. Like, hands down, still cry about the moment. It was, I can't find that place again, really. Love that. Angeles. What was it? I said Los Angeles. No, not Los Angeles, but that's a good one. That's a big target. Yeah. No, not this time. Um, East or West? <laughs> middle. <laughs> Greenville, Illinois? <laughs> uh, kind of, but more depressing. Obviously, Wichita. Houston? Is that middle? It's, no. Des Moines. Des Moines. Des Moines. See, another cliffhanger. You just have to God. find out. No one said it yet. Um, Kiki, uh, to your specific question, uh, ask your – okay, yeah, ask any TF there. If you can't figure it out, uh, direct message me, and I can definitely pop in to your small group um, to see what exactly is going on there. But um, all right. Kyle, any, can we see your CSS for the side-by-side? -side uh, yes, for sure. That's So this is going to be something we've never talked about, but I did want to give you guys an example for. Uh, it's called Flexbox. If you want to get the specific code, remember it's on my GitHub if you want to see all the CSS. Okay. But I will show it you right now. Um, this, is, this is it right here for some of it. Uh, but let's go actually see the form. It's going to be a little bit more staggered, but that's fine. There you go. So that's technically right there, the, the CSS that you need for side by side. Left with 50. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Any final questions, anyone, about Angular? You all did great today. So components is the thing. It is the key, and it is the future. So if there are any questions, get those tackled ASAP. Because this right here is any UI work. If you ever hop into it, it's going to be Angular, React, or Vue. Most of it. Of course, there are still um, traditional websites out there. All right. I'm hearing crickets. So in that case, feel free, everyone, to leave me. I will be back here on at 8 o'clock. Feel free to come and talk to me. We're going to be working through the studio. But thank you, everyone, for your attention tonight. Stay safe this weekend if I don't see you again. And have a great one. I'll see you all back here on Monday. Bye, everybody. Okay.